In this video, I will be recreating this unique grid card by using the Brick Square Loop Builder from a custom post type, a long advanced custom fields metadata so that whenever you need to change one card element, you won't need to manually change every card item. I will show you the entire process and you will be ready to set up and design a custom and a modern grid design layout within Bricks Builder. Once you are done with the video, you simply replicate this process to every custom post type. This video is for everyone who needs to create unique responsive content dynamically without relying on static content. Welcome to my YouTube channel, my name is Natalie, a YouTube channel dedicated to help WordPress community to build stunning WordPress websites. I have already set up my custom post type, which I called testimonials. I've created by using the ACF plugin and you create a custom post type by opening the ACF plugin entry and then click on the custom post type entry. The custom post type is labeled as testimonials and if I open it up, you can see there is a plural and a singular label and then I enter the taxonomy type to be used in future when I need to categorize the testimonials and you can choose between tags or categories inside the WordPress standard taxonomies. I also made it visible in the admin dashboard and that's why I have turned on this public option. I also enabled the advanced configuration since I want to enable certain features in the content editor. I have enabled the title, the feature image, and I will explain you in a second the reason why. In the, the visibility settings is where you define and set up the menu position inside the dashboard here. So I've defined the menu position to be five, and I also choose a menu icon to be displayed in the sidebar menu, which you can bring by using URL, so nothing special, it's a simple and straightforward process. The video focus is about the Bricks Builder query loop, not this specific piece of content. Then I published and then I got my custom post type with my custom icon. Next step, I went ahead and I created my field groups with the ACF plugin, but you can use any other plugin. It consists of three fields, which are in fact the coming card elements that will constitute the grid bricks cards, which will be made in a few minutes with the bricks query loop. One key setting was to specify exactly where to show this field group and you define it here under the settings section where you define as you are viewing, I have established to be shown on the in my testimonial custom post type within this drop down list. Then I save the changes and we are done. Thereafter, we need to add to the custom post type the testimonial content by filling these ACF fields. Here are the fields created with the ACF. It's the testimonial image to hold the profile picture, the testimonial input, and finally the testimonial company. Of course, this is a fictional a scenario. So I open now my custom post type entry and I fill these fields so, so that we can pull out inside the Bricks Builder. Don't forget to upload your feature image and associated tag. I will demonstrate you by filling one testimonial. So click on testimonials, add a new one, and then just fill in all the ACF, select, select an image, then my random Laura Epson text and the testimonial company web design and the feature image. So the next step will be opening the testimonial page where you want to display this inside the Bricks Builder. I created a new page labeled as testimonials 
publish, publish, and then click on edit with bricks. I start by having a section and I will be using automatic CSS framework to help my workflow in writing CSS for me. A section is used to separate topics on a page. So click on the plus icon and immediately we get this dual structure, a section and a container. You can set to full width if you determine the semantic tag of section. Another thing I like to do is to set the padding to remain consistent across the page. So I say I want a small padding, so I enter pad XS because I want a small padding here. Perfect. I also want to have a background, a light background. I enter background, ultra light, this one. And next up, I want to have the page adding. So select the container, then on, click on the plus icon and enter the heading. It will be an H1 and the text will be testimonials. And next up, we need another section element to break down the page. The next section will contain the grid layout. I will start by creating the card design first uh, to then make the query loop. So create a new section. The section direction is set to vertical and the next move is to create the grid to allow us to create two dimensional layouts with columns and rows. I will be using automatic CSS once more and all I do is to write grid three Next up, we, I need to specify the number of columns, and so I enter grid L1 to break down to one column on the breakpoint. And I also need to set a gap. So my gap is gap S. And the letter S stands for small. Now that I have actually defined the fully responsive grid structure for this page, we are ready for the coming card grid design. As I mentioned before, I first designed the card in a static mode to then turn it to a dynamic one. I will explain everything in detail. Next up, I will have a div element. So click on the plus icon and the div has immediately been inserted. This div element, it's a bricks layout element completely unstyled and if placed inside other layouts elements such as a container, a section or a block, it grows and shrinks based on the elements it contains. I also like to rename all my structures, so press enter. For this one, it will be container grid. So I have an, an image with a custom HTML set to A to make it clickable. Select the image, it would be this one. And for the middle one, I insert a heading and the basic text. The heading will be, will be an H3 and I call it manual card design, just like that. And all of this, as you can see, is manually. In a few moments, we will turn it to a dynamic content and fully customizable content based on your own criteria for this basic text. I will put here some dummy text, placeholder, the la for the last div, a text link, this one. And then I change it to read more. I also insert an icon. The position is right and with a gap of 25 amps. Fine for me. By default, pixels are applied, but you can change it to whatever relative unit which I recommend you use. And now that we have inserted all card elements, it's time to do some overall adjustments. To the deep card wrapper, I inserted here a var space S. And the variable is a global class applied across the web page. And this means you have full control. Next one, I will be having a box shadow. Select box shadow. I enter my values. And with a padding, apply to all sides of 125 amps. Click on this to apply in every 
sides. And I also want to have a padding top to the heading element. So I enter space as marvelous. It makes the workflow much easier. It's powerful indeed. And to the heading, we need to make it clickable. So select the heading element and to make it clickable, simply open the link to internal post or page and then you will choose which post page you want to use. I select testimonials page. And next up, let's adjust the elements spacing. And let's put here a top padding of one hem to see how it looks like. And now for this read more, one M. I also want to change the text like font weight. The card looks much more cleaner and readable to me. Now I want to customize the image border. So select the image, add a class called card image, press enter, and now go to the S type tab under the border, press specify. 50 amps to all sides. Next up, I want to assign the CSS object free property to specify how the image should be resized. And by assigning, I'm telling that this card image should stretch up and take up as much space as possible. So move over to the content tab and under the object fit, you can choose any of these five options. You should go with the cover option. Also, you can set this to the object position to 50%, which means perfectly aligned. And finally, I do think this basic text needs to be smaller. So I go to create a global class called card. It's called card body text, this one. And now you go to typography and I assign a, a font size of 1.6 RAM, 1.5 RAM. It looks pretty good to me. And now is the time to duplicate all of these cards element by using the query loop. With the container grid selected, you toggle on this use query loop. You specify here what kind of posts or terms or users you want to display. I want to show my testimonials, so it's a post. The post type is my testimonials. And the next and final step is to replace this static content into dynamic ones. And to make the switch, just select, for example, the heading element, then press this icon to select dynamic data and to see all the available dynamic options. Scroll through and find the post title. You delete this, you don't need it anymore. And instantly I receive all my custom post types, titles updated at once. All my cards now have the different team members' names. You can now play with the query loop parameter setting. These ones, you can set it to ascendant. You will see that all are ordered from A to Z. And now let's replace the static text into a dynamic one. Again, the process is similar. Just press the basic text block, delete this you don't need anymore. Click on the dynamic content icon. And I want to insert now the ACF term, testimonial text. This one, don't worry if you see this because on the front end, everything looks just fine. Finally, I want to insert the ACF field related to the content. Company. How do you do this? You just select the basic text then the dynamic icon, scroll down till you find the testimonial company and you can enter company name. And now let's quickly view on the front end. So click on the preview and this is how it looks like. It only misses the image. Select the image, delete, select dynamic data, scroll down, select ACF, testimonial image. You wait a few seconds and there you have it. All oh, my image, my profile image have been uploaded. Let's check on the front end. Well, it looks pretty amazing to me. So we have 
replaced all the static content into a dynamic one. We have this dynamic profile picture, the profile name, the input, and the read mark. All of this is generated dynamically. And if for some reason you have some columns not being equal, select the div link and set a top margin of auto text link itself a margin top of 1m save it refresh it and take a look at the front end beautiful let's check on mobile views well it looks pretty pr promising to me everything is perfectly aligned and awesome so that's how you create and manage a page dynamically Dynamic websites like this page allows you to update, modify the content easily as needed. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel so more Bricks users can watch this video. YouTube only display this video to more people if you click the like button or if you leave me a comment. Thank you for your support. I will catch you in my next Bricks video.